Mm-hmm. So I I like the EAP, right? Um, Employee Assistance Program. The blight piece scares me um, because then it puts government in a position, I believe, to some degree of being overreaching. I think we only had one blight at home in my four years of being here. Am I right, Dad? It literally was just the one. And we didn't even, and we're still working with them, right? Is that the one we just had? What are you talking? Which one are you? What are you talking about? Was that a mayor? Or was it was it last year? Well, we've had. Okay, I mean, that's a different thing. But yeah, under the statute that allows us to declare a place properties, right. we have done that. I believe with just the one property. Just the one time, right? Huh? So I've been following this for six right. years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. I just couldn't remember if I was there over which, here, but it only happened mm-hmm. once. Which I apparently th- is in the pro- in the process again. I think. Habitat's acquired it. Right, we, yeah, we're we still we working with that. Yeah. So we're still working with this person. So my point to you is we don't even have homes that reach this state, and I don't want to start looking for them because I want to take them and give them to somebody else. Now, I know that's not what you're saying, but that's what I'm saying. Because when I read that, if I agree to that, then in, a, in effect, in order for me to get blight removal, my criteria and my my nose for snooping for people that may fall victim to that mm-hmm. starts to become more aggressive. Even though I want them, especially I want them for the EAP, but that part scares me because we don't we don't act like that in Harrisonburg mm-hmm. because we're still working with the individual that we pretty much all thought was a bloody home, right? If you asked us outside. But in here, we decided to work with that individual, and we're still working with that individual. Right. And we're talking about one house out of 50,000 people. And uh, <clears throat> again, I, out of I think uh, I, I don't want to, I guess the, I don't want to set perceptions because we haven't really developed a program to say what the parameters are. So, you know, your right, initial you, reaction, I, I clearly understand, but w- without development of a program, you know how we pr- how we well no we do we do declare homes that can be blight as of now. And my point to you is that furthering a program like this could maybe make individuals a little over aggressive. Is this do you, do you guys understand? No, me? I understand yeah. what you're saying. Because if you start looking for something that isn't there, eventually you're gonna find something. I and if mm-hmm. we continue to the point, the reason I asked the question, is CDBG. There's only X amount of dollars. Currently, that portion of CDEG are going to agencies that provide some type of housing. So it is a switch of redirecting of CDEG funding from one agency to another. Somewhat. Oh, Councilman, if I, if I could address that. I mean, I, you know the, it better than we do. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> um, the uh, specific category that Mr. Wong is referring to, actually, we have subrecipients that provide services across the community, not just housing. Sure. Um, I mean, everything from the suitcase clinic that provides preventative medical care and in, in, right. uh, our homeless shelters um, uh, to the Boys and Girls Club and Big Brothers Big Sisters. So, I mean, it, 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 those funds shift and change and provide services and assistance to a, a whole host of nonprofits across the community. Um, but I, I will I will add to Mr. Wong, um, the city of Harrisonburg and the authority work together on some of our big um, right. housing and urban development, uh, the con plan, consolidated annual plan, um, and trying to address home ownership has been a goal for both the city's community development block grant do- dollar entitlement right. as well as the housing authority. And it is a goal nationwide, correct? Yes, sir. So yeah. Driven down gold yeah. from the federal government as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. So who on the city side would be partly we would be working with community Michael community on development, this, Adam? On this project. So the way that I believe <coughs> Mr. Wong is proposing this is that the authority would be applying for CDBG dollars. Those dollars would then be subgranted to the authority for use in this program. Uh, now, I, I thought what we had discussed, and I think perhaps there's maybe a little confusion, Mr. Wong, and I, I, I don't want to clarify on your behalf, 
But I think what, what Mr. Wong and the authority are viewing at some future point is that CDBG dollars would be used for a, home, a down payment assistance program that could be, in essence, managed by the commercial lenders would be the ones that would have these people that would be approached um, trying to find a home, a home loan to buy a house. But perhaps they're doing the vetting process, but m maybe I'm not right on that. I, you are correct on that. And all the uh, – in the Authority's Home Ownership Program and in the proposed Employee Assistance Program, it's all using commercial lenders um, and, and pri you know, private bank institutions to be able to uh, finance the process. Right. What we need to do is provide a secondary uh, down payment closing cost assistance with a forgivable component of that. So we assist in being able to allow the access to it and reducing that, uh, again, that impact of the down payment costs and costs. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Wong, are you married to both of these ideas or? Um, I'm open to both of those ideas. And, again, it, it's, it's a beginning of a conversation in regard to these ideas. Um, it's an opportunity to be able to I, – I hear what you're saying about having the ability to identify properties blight. Um, but having a clear program um, that we can be able to encourage also owners to improve the property to, to allow for that attractiveness and not to have that decreased property value, I think really has a positive impact too. I think one of the other things, man, everything I'm on is coming up tonight. So I'm on HDR board, and one of the things that we made for sure specifically we didn't do is have a, a, a piece that dealt with aesthetics. And and that came from the builders and the board. And so we certainly can't push that into the communities as well. Hmm. I mean, I, I can't. <laughs> I can't. Because literally, the people I support on both sides. And then moreover, we, I'll give you an example. So if, when I, I call the chief to my house, the fire chief to my house, right, because I have a gas fireplace, I wanted to make sure I was using it right, make sure no carbon monoxide was in my house. When you call the fire chief to your house, he's going to check everything. So he's looking at the locks. He's checking the smoke detectors, the carbon monoxide detectors. He's checking the gas tank. He checked everything that fell under a fire chief, right? My point to you is this. When you, call, you can call somebody for one thing, looking for one thing, and then it turns into something else. Now, in that case, that was a good thing. It was safe for my family. Yeah. But if we developed, if we under a community <coughs> development and, and started looking for more blighted homes or homes – that we found to be um, of a blight nature, that's going to be a problem. And there, I, I could never get, I couldn't be behind that because it, it, it sends a signal to a lot of the homes, especially of those individuals I was just talking about, maybe individuals that are not from here. This is when the, the weeds and tall grass ordinance could start getting out of hand. This is when... Um, discrimination and other things to start to get out of hand because people start to report that. I'm just, just giving you a bunny trail. But people can start to report that to start to build a case to why a home is now considered blight. When out of as long as these two gentlemen have been here and I've sat here, we, we've got one. <laughs> right. You see what I'm saying? Yep. And so for that one to suddenly <clears throat> turn into a number where you can have a program, that means something happened and we lost the friendliness of who we are. But the EAP program, how that could help Dr. Kisner and the school board attract better teachers for Andrew, how that could help, so I'm picking on the fire chief, how that could help him, mm -hmm. how that could help our future police chief, that's great. How that could help Eric with city staff, I think that's great. But I just, from the aesthetic standpoint, like when you started going down that road, like that, that's, not, that's just not who the city of Harrisonburg is. And it's certainly not the first one. I'm going to just real quick. I'm sorry. I'm um, yeah. Um, <laughs> I do agree with you. And what I'm hesitant about is that when you start, like it's almost like you're opening up a Pandora. Pandora's box here. I don't want you going through neighborhoods saying, oh, well, I don't know what the criteria is going to be for a blight home, right? And so you, you kind of get into an area that I don't feel – um, I don't feel that I, I can support because I don't want you going, if you come through my neighborhood, you might consider my home blight, right? So now we're looking at something uh, like Councilman Jones was saying. The other thing that I'm, I'm 
I like the idea of the families being able to learn about being homeowners, but I want that to be families that need it, right? I want that to be diversity, right? Because if you look in, in my neighborhood, if somebody could help families that I know that needs that type of assistance, that's the families I want to have. So that's the only thing that I'm questioning, and that's the only thing I want to say. Go ahead. Um, the, one, the only comment I would say is that, um, <coughs> you know, when, when we talk about blight, and I'm, t I'm talking about clearly abandoned properties that are having people live in that aren't supposed to live in. We're talking about land that has been, you know, has not been kept up, that has been under tax um, lien for a number of years, that has been under trustee issues. So, again, I, you know, I, I clearly hear what you say, and uh, we're definitely not in the business of impacting or, or being a judge in regard to people's quality of their homes and, you know, cutting the grass or things of that sort or making things, everyth everything custom cuddle, but we do have situations and do have um, areas in our community that they have those types of situations that are occurring, and we need to be able to address them one way or another. Unless you're telling me city staff is missing something, I only got one. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why, I, that's why I have to firmly disagree with you. Yeah. Well, so that, that's what I'm saying. That's becoming a matter of opinion and not fact. Mm. So based off the facts that my staff has given to me, I only have one, and we're working with that person, so this doesn't apply yeah. to us. If, I, I, if I would I would like, could I can I ask yeah. two two points of clarification? I, I don't want to <coughs> beleaguer this much more, but we're, this is not this is not somebody that didn't mow their yard, and and this is not opening up Correct. to aesthetics. For federal dollars to be used for a blight program or a down payment assistance program, uh, the rulers are kind of built in, yeah. um, especially for spot blight, because you are. Uh, having the greatest impact, you are impacting a person's property rights. And the federal government does not take that lightly. Mm -hmm. So this is not somebody that didn't mow their yard or didn't paint their house for the past 10 years. This is significant. Uh, secondly, for federal dollars to be used for an employee assistance program or a down payment assistance program, I don't know about ethnicity or race, but I mean, they would have to meet the socioeconomic definitions of low to moderate income, period. Correct. Period. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, I'm all behind EAP. Any other questions? But thank you, Mr. Bennett. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Okay. I guess I did all that. I got to make a motion. <laughs> I, <have to> <laughs> I moved the approval of authorization to at least work with city staff to develop. I guess you can't move forward unless we take another vote on the second term anyway. So if I can if somebody say But this is only just to 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 build a program and take let's take a look at to it. To look at it. Look at scope. To look at it. Right. Yeah. We're doing a whole lot of looking tonight, I tell you. Okay. I let's, mean I I need to be clear, Chris. Just to look at it. Yeah. Okay. yeah I'm not voting for a, a blight removal program. No, I'm not either. Program. We can't just make up something we all, we don't have a problem doing. All right. So and I appreciate what you're saying, Andy, that the criteria would even be even harder. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that makes me feel better, but it's not even something I would entertain. But anyway, I move to request the council approves and authorizes um, housing authority to work with city staff to develop the above to an EAP program for council's consideration of approval. Hmm. Mm. I don't even think we need to develop well <laughs> I guess it needs to be seconded for I'll discussion. second for discussion. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, we'll I think we're being asked to consider further partnership. So again, we gotta have a discussion. Right. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. This doesn't commit us down this road. Correct. Mm -hmm. Because there is another bite of C D B G funding coming out of here and or general fund revenues being asked for which we certainly I'm just we're being that's the reason I'm, my questions were asked in the manner they were yeah this doesn't limit it to just the CDBG correct because he's been here before asking they're using 75,000 out of their own funds 
to get it up and running. And it's a trial also. So I guess I'm okay with let's further the conversation and let's see if the, the comfortability with it. Because, again, as we go on down our agenda, when it comes to money, we're going to have to start saying no, <laughs> depending upon certain decisions. I'm just being out there. No, I don't, yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm seconding that with that understanding, not for the development, but for further discussions. Come back to us. Yeah, and that, that, that is the essence of my motion is Absolutely. for the discussion. And really, I only want you to discuss one thing. If you want, <laughs> I trust Mr. Banks in that I, at least the criteria would be so stern for number one that I couldn't disagree because um, it would be coming from the feds. But I really don't, only even entertaining number two, but because that bounces off of what we did as far as like diversity hiring and making sure we so. And I'm, I'd like to hear council members' ball opinion. If so, if not, I mean you've been involved with this closer than I have. You're, what do you think? I. I think it makes sense to go ahead and again, the request is consider further partnership. I favor considering further partnership. We've identified some issues here um, that, sure, we can get into the weeds. You know, we, we can't get into the weeds with so much right now, um, but including the interplay with state law because the state, because the, because blight as we've done it so far exactly. is under state law. Right. And again, it has a serious, it's not something you just do. <clears throat> it's not something you can just walk up to somebody and say, yeah, yeah, somebody decided. But we're mindful of those things. And as we go forward, um, I think you've heard that, that, that council is very interested in knowing where those boundaries are. And, and I, at least for me, um, <coughs> you know, the, stereo, the stereotypical negative I'm hearing is we don't want a situation <coughs> where uh, Again, someone from your agency, which, you know, you guys do a lot of work, but you're not directly responsible to the public in quite the way that we are. Right. right. And for us to find out that suddenly somebody's not happy with what you're doing right. and we've right. then got limitability. That's that's the very thing that we're yeah. sure. we just want to make sure that we don't set up something like that. But that's again, in the context of consider further partnership, sure. And I believe it was including on blighted issues. Property, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that's fine. I'll look at it. But I guess I'm very sensitive when it comes to Harrisonburg because of R4 and what happened right. then. And so in the name of redevelopment, tons of folks lost homes. Right. People, there are lots of folks that are from a particular neighborhood that don't know where their grandparents used to live. They don't know where they used to get their hair cut, where they bought their groceries, because that was all destroyed in the name right. of urban development. My neighborhood. Exactly. So... Mm -hmm. But you got a lot of places where you can squawk now, and at that time, even if you had some place to squawk, they probably wouldn't listen to you anyway. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I'm just saying, I'm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people that are still sensitive to that. So, that's a real I, thing. I know that very well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very well aware of that. George? Any more discussion? I understand what's going on, and I agree with the, the approach that we're taking at this point. Uh, it's kind of baby steps to see how things develop, and we'll go from there. Okay. Um, I'm hesitant. I'm going to let you know up front. Um, I'm going to agree with it, but I'm going to be part of the procedure. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to be part of that procedure. That's fair. All right. Roll call, please, Mary Hope. Council Member Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Ball. Aye. Council Member Bird. Aye. Council Member Hirschman. Aye. Mayor Reed. Aye. Thank you. Thank you.